What's up, YouTube? This is Irad, a.k.a. The Chef, and we're broadcasting live from the Gundam Kitchen. It's your boy Gundam Nerd, reporting live from the Gundam Kitchen, and welcome to Real World Gunpla. It's our second episode. We're going to get right into it. What are you building right now? Well, as everybody knows, I've been working on a Nightingale for us for about half my life, so uh talking about buying off more than you can chew. Mm. Well, me, I'm currently working on a, uh, a high new Gundam. Uh, definitely going to freak that out. That's the Verka, um edition of it. So hopefully that'll definitely rock out. You know, I blast out a kit in two days, so I'll be off that kit and probably entering a new kit before the weekend is up. And before I finish that nine I'll probably finish two other kits and about 20 miniatures because I got to do that too. All right. So what, um, are you hyped on any of the new kits that are coming out? Are you hyped well, on that? One of the new kits I'm looking forward to is that local Gundam. Love them Origin kits. What's that other one coming out from Origin too? Uh, uh, you, uh, the Zaku Cannon? The Zaku Cannon. Yeah. Yep. I actually like that design. I actually like the two under, those uh, two uh, under cannons yeah. that they got under the arms. I'm pretty psyched on that reversible. Yeah. Um, I'm not big on that reversible, but I think there's going to be amazing customs coming out of that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I, I tell you this. I'm pretty psyched on a reversible, not because of the, uh, not because of just the design, although I do like the certain parts of the design. It kind of reminds me of the uh, one point, f is what happens when you mix a 1.5 with uh, a uh, Epion. Right. That's the Epion what I think. Tails. Right, right. That's killer um, right there. I actually like that kit, but when I see that big white kit, the only thing I can think of is canvas, mm -hmm. which makes customizing is going to be insane. I can imagine a hundred different custom pictures coming out within the next year with everybody freaking that out and not sticking it to the, uh, you know, you know, Standard you know, colors, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm looking forward to seeing all those customs coming out of that bad boy. Uh, the amazing Zegok is actually going to be sick. I actually want to see that. P Bandai. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, being as though nothing else is really kind of like grabbing my attention for this month, mm -hmm. let's talk about you know, you know, you know, just a couple kits for this month. So yeah, okay. P Bandai seem to be hot this month. Yeah. It's definitely it's way hot more. This year. <laughs> right. But one thing about this uh, new P Bandai kit they're coming out with this uh, amazing Zegok are the weapons. The weapons are sick. A million and one photo different. You know. You know. Uh, photo and uh, uh, diorama ideas just stem from what comes with the package. You got those, you got the arm with the whips on them. You got the other one with the cannons on them. And I'm really psyched on the legs. Yeah. Wait, what I want them to do, I need an act guy from a Thunderbolt. Because you got all those mods on that. Why Dude, not? Give me an act guy. Yeah, bring that out, please. Bandai. That, that Thunderbolt act guy got a little better angles on him. He looked a little more aggressive. Dude, yeah. That was definitely badass. I would definitely love to see everyone. Like, if they came out with a P-Bandai kit that had every single armament. Yeah, option part. Yeah. Right. That was on it. That would be perfect. Let's talk about these these uh, wing kits. They they re-released two of them. Uh, one of them is the Nataku, which is pretty sick. I really like that. I was really, I was this close, this close to... Uh, grabbing that third party one until Bandai said, you know what, we're going to release it. You know, we're going to re-release it. And it kind of took me away. Not that I'm not interested in buying the third party edition, but right now I have every single Bandai kit from Wing. You know? All right, all right. And this right here and this pretty much completes my whole Endless Waltz uh, you know, series as far as kits goes. So I, I would definitely like that, especially the Bandai one. And I'm also a little bit psyched on the heavy arms. Even though these are re-releases, the uh, heavy arms kind of got me because uh, you actually get two of the cannons. Not saying it's much of a big difference, a paint job and all that, but you actually get two of the double Gatling guns that are on the arm that I think is actually pretty cool. And that would cost you a grip to get them any other way unless you steal it off your friend's kit. Right, or you do a trade-in, <laughs> or you have a local shop like this one that actually does swap meets and stuff like that. Right, right. So, you know. Um, but now let's talk about the kit that everybody, eh, I would say is, eh, I, I would pretty much say this is the heat. This is this, the T-band I heat for sure. I like the sand rock, not because of anything new, but because of that big cloak that they got on it. I think that that's insane. I love that. And I actually think it's worth the buy. Yeah, at least that's, you know, that cloak is unique. 
Uh, question: Does that sand rock come with the uh, come with the uh, come with the endless waltz colors under that cloak? Looks like it. Hmm. Yeah, it looked like it was a lighter color. So it wasn't that gray if, tones. If it does, that's a buy for me. Yeah, that's a buy. And I'm, it, it it doesn't take much to get me to just buy stuff, especially when it comes to Gundam stuff. Now the big one. Let's it's talk the about Christmas that. miracle if it happens. They talk about bringing it out early. We heard very little hype all year long. All of a sudden, they just dropped us on it, what, a month ago? Yeah. yeah Out of yeah. nowhere. PGXia. And they said it's going to be ready within the next two months. But we know what's being released over in Japan and over there doesn't hit us until a month later. So, of course, I, personally, I think we would love to look at it as like a big Christmas gift for us. But I don't think it'll come until after the new year. Well, my distributors say they get it early in December. We'll see. Big question is, to light or not to light? That is the question. Hmm. I would say, if you're paying, how much is the kit? 175 for no lights, 325 with lights. Okay. Uh, a kit like this. Don't quote is, me. <laughs> I would say this is the most updated PG that they have right now, you know? And... This is, just, this is just like the unicorn. You don't want to put it together and then end up taking it apart just to put in a light kit. So if you're going to have this, and like you're not just getting a regular light kit. Yeah. You, you know, you, you know you, you, you're Looks getting special. a light kit. Right, right. <laughs> it pulsates. It changes color. It, you know, it charges up. Like, it's a lot of little cool gimmicks with the light kit. So I say too light. Yeah, so, I mean, the word is, for what I'm hearing in the grapevine, you may get a light kit in the future, but that could be way past March. So who's going to sit on their kit and not build it? I Maybe see. those hoarders, but uh, who else would sit on their kit and not build it? <laughs> Gum, yeah, plastic hoarders. <laughs> well, i tell you what. It's definitely something to have in the collection. As far as PGs go, I definitely want that. I need that. You know, I need that in my collection. Only because uh, it's a definite, like, it is, I tell you what, out of a lot of uh, PG kits, aside from the Unicorn, it's probably one of the better kits to display because of the lights. It'll attract a lot of attention just because yeah. of that, you know? Speaking of plastic hoarders, which was last week's topic, this week's topic, struggle builders. Hmm. So when we talk about struggle builders, what are we talking about? Straight from the real world dictionary. Right. Struggle builders. Builders whose builds are not reaching the desired results due to shortcuts and, ex and experimental alternative methods. So, um, basically, uh, you, uh, this is not to come at anybody individually. This is just to come at the method in which you use to get the results that you want. You know, we look at a lot of builders. We look at a lot of, you know, if you're anything like me or anybody that loves, you know, you know, like the whole mecha thing like me, then you, you know, then you're going to see builders that you like and you're going to constantly drool and drool over better builds and better stuff like that. You know, like, you know, you want and then when you want to build, then then, you know, you want those same results, you know, but you can't achieve those results if you shortcut it. So obviously Gunpla is our habit. And we got to support our habit with the correct tools and the correct methods. So let's think about what we're buying and how we can buy the best tools for the money we have. Because crappy tools equal crappy results. Correct. That's right. Uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. I don't know if you ever heard that before, but hey, that's what you get, especially when you're dealing with something like this. You know, um, let's just say this. Uh, let's give an example. Right. Say. Walmart, right, has uh, certain paints and stuff like that that might be super affordable, uh, and they say they're for crafty stuff, but it doesn't really say for anything small scale, scale or anything model. like that, right? Why would you get that when they have paints like Tamiya, Mr. Color, stuff like that? Like, you have a lot of different options when it comes to this zone right here. It's a lot of different products for small scale modeling. So why would you outsource to another place that would possibly have it cheaper when you're not going to get the results that you want? All right. That three dollar can of Krylon looks real tempting, but that's meant to cover fences and furniture, not meant to cover something that's five, six inches tall. Correct. Correct. It will 
you may not see it right away, but you're going to be losing some detail. Oh, yeah. You, you, hell, yeah, you're going to be losing detail. And if you notice, um, if you look on the cans, you know, even on the cans of, like, the model paint, even if it's aerosol, it says, for fine work, you know? Mm-hmm. It doesn't say for anything else, for fine, you know, for fines and for plastics and details and stuff like yeah. that. You can melt your shit. Yeah, oh, <laughs> you definitely. use the wrong stuff, you might definitely. melt something. Yep. And you can get the wrong paint that just might end up being too thick, you know? Yeah. I like to write. I like to uh, do murals on walls and stuff like that using aerosol paint. And I made a mistake of actually... I like actually, to write. It's called graffiti. Yeah. Hey, it's, hey, <laughs> nobody knows yet. Nobody knows. Um, uh, I tried to use that paint to paint a couple kits. And the result was, it was trash. It was like really thick paint. It took away the detail on my, Now, I tried to paint a real grade, and it actually took away the detail on the real grade. Did you have a real grade left when you were done? Did uh, you even see the real grade underneath? There? No. No, I didn't. I actually tried to get it off with a certain thinner, and it completely destroyed done, my right? plastic. Yeah, newbie move. <laughs> newbie move for me. All right, know? so next, you got you got to moderate yourself. Um, build your collection slowly of these tools and paints. You don't got to buy it all at once. Mm-hmm. Build it up. Brax here. He comes to my store about every week, every other week, buys like three, four kits, and always walks out with some paint and yeah. usually a tool too. So right. always upgrade it. I'll tell you what. I can look at my toolbox. I know I can look at my toolbox and be happy because I, you know, I, I kind of can't be jammed up when I'm building. I have all of my knives I need, you know, if it's certain colors. I know even from the colors that I've accumulated during time, I can actually make other colors that I don't have, you know. Um, Small tools, like everything adds up. You don't have to go all out. You don't have to spend $40 a week on tools, you know. I spend, you know, maybe 10 bucks extra, if that, after I get a kit on uh, different paints and or a tool. So as the old saying goes, it's quality over quantity. You know, if you're buying nippers every month, it's because your nippers are cheap and they're probably breaking or using them wrong. But uh, you want some quality nippers. And when I say quality nippers, you don't got to go out there and grab the God hands. But Lord, don't let me see you using, using some toenail clippers. <laughs> you know them I'm, cats. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's, yeah, that's definite struggle build. Uh, that's, <laughs> a per- that's the perfect struggle build uh, example right there. You know what Got I mean? Got some toe jam stone on nippers and cutting them. Oh, <laughs> cutting up the kits with them. Oh, man. Talk about seasoned nippers. Yeah. It's kind of <laughs> raw. Nippers. It's kind of raw. It's kind of raw. So basically, we're saying, uh, you know, uh, get the tools that you need. You know, get the tools that you need according to what kind of builder you are. Now, what I don't want to see you guys out there doing is looking up these crazy experimental alternative ideas you sometimes see on YouTube. There's cats doing some weird one-off stuff. Stick to the tried and true methods. They've been around for 20, 30, 40 years for a reason. Builders have been building stuff before Gundams, and those same techniques work now. So true. learn them, learn the basics, and perfect them. Ding, ding, ding. Versus time. You ain't ready for me right now. Okay, let me give y'all a little bit of uh, insight on what we we'll on what we call verses. Basically, we take two uh, anime mecha related objects and we put them up against each other to see who would win in a battle. Uh, and uh, my first pick, who I'm going for right now, we're going for mobile suits. So uh, today, uh, my pick for my champion mobile suit which i know will be the champion is i'm gonna go with the new gundam yeah it was new once <coughs> kasatri is gonna take it the kasatri is okay uh now i don't even want to start with weaponry i'm going to beat you on weaponry and i i, I think you know this no. okay um you better win somewhere else because weaponry is not where you're gonna win okay beam sabers how many you got? Mm, six. How many oh. you got? Six? Yep, and two of them can be used as guns, too. <laughs> okay. I have three. You didn't ask me how many hands I have. How many manipulators do you have? I have four. Mm-hmm. One on each binder. Plus okay. my normal hands. Is that it? 
Yeah, hands wise, that's it. Hmm. Okay. Anything else that you would like to uh, put on it that you think can mess with my high V? Well, I mean my V. We, 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 I guess we're talking about offense right now, right? Mm-hmm. How's a mega particle cannon sound? How does two? Not bad. Binder, I got a hyper bazooka. Uh, but I got two on each binder. I got four binders. That's eight plus four on my chest. Twelve. Oh. On the regular V Gundam, I have uh, two sixty millimeter Vulcan cannons. Vulcan guns, I'm sorry. Vulcan guns and a machine gun. Well, remember those uh, mega particle cannons in my chest? Correct. I got machine gatlins between them. I have a beam cannon. Uh, and a uh, manga version, gatlins in my arm. Mm, I like how you just switched to the manga version real quick because I didn't even go into... I didn't even go into the iller versions of this suit that I picked, you know, because, no, we picking a suit, not saying that we can't go because it was a couple different versions of the V Gundam. He's scared. I'm not scared. I'm just, l listen, you want to put it up there. We're going to say, okay, you got your Kshatriya, but your Kshatriya only had one level. And that's exactly what you saw on that, if not read in the manga or something like that. That's one. And I was level when he got ass kicked and I had to get the fake leg. I have. <laughs> this is true. This is true. But it took a fake leg for you to get a Gatlin on your leg. Right? Now, we're talking about the V Gundam. We also have the high V Gundam. We also have the heavy weapon system. And oh. the heavy weapon system uh, is actually good. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, you know, let's remember that. You know what I mean? Um, Let me just touch on a couple uh, badass points about the V Gundam. Right? First off, it was one of the most advanced systems at the time when the size of B was out, yeah, right? When it was out. Number one, right? Do you know who helped the, uh, who helped come up with the technology for it? Who? Your boy, Char. <laughs> My favorite pilot, by the way. Char is a damn beast. You know what I'm saying? Um, something else about the V Gunnam is it actually stores battle, uh, battle info and then applies it during the next battle which is real good you know what i'm saying uh it was the first it was the first uh mobile suit with with uh funnels mm -hmm. let's just say that how many funnels you got six okay, okay. um do you have a cycle frame uh, yes yeah, frame, yes 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 but and, and the cycle frame is something all within itself man the cycle frame was made to save humanity, brother. Yeah, let's talk about that cycle frame. Uh, does a Kasatria have a, a cycle yes, frame? Yes, it does. Oh! oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. And um, the Kasatria is, what, maybe 20 years more advanced? Mm-hmm. And the Kasatria has 24 funnels. 24. Okay, okay. Now you say 24 funnels, right? Okay. Now you're going to make me break out the big guns. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me start with another little thing right there. Oh, yeah, and the uh, and the V Gundam, right, was was uh, also made with older parts. And that's Sounds like shitty parts. But okay. that, no, no, that's not a disadvantage. That just makes it easier for it to repair if it was to ever get battle damaged or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? So it doesn't need like a shabby-ass Gatlin like? No, okay. no, hell no, not at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and... Uh, and who was the pilot? Who was one of the most illest pilots besides Char? All right. I'm going to give you that one. Armour Ray. Badass. Okay. Now you got Armour Ray versus uh, what's Maria, homegirl name? Maria. Marita. Uh, Marita Cruz, yeah. right? Little Psycho. Yeah. Oh, little, little, little Psycho. Yeah. She's a wacko. You yeah, know what I mean? Okay. Um, and But the High V had better thrusters and uh, it actually had rechargeable funnels. Now we're going to move this up. That way, if you talk this 20 years later, uh, beat the Kshatriya thing, then let's go with the one that is a little bit more advanced. Let's not start with the oldest high V. Let's start with the newest one that they came out. Uh, and that's the heavy weapon system, okay. right? So it got not one mega particle cannon, but two of them, right? Still um, have eight of them. <clears throat> hyper mega rifle with increased firepower. Vicious. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Although it wasn't completed. That's what I can say. Up in his face. You know okay. what I'm saying? Um, uh, the missile launchers were improved, right? So we got that. And uh, actually, the missile launchers are improved versions of the double Zetas missile, uh, you know, missile launchers. Boom, mm -hmm. boom. You know, the double things that's on hands. Boom, it killed that right there. So uh, I don't know. You make the pick. Personally, I think that uh, 
that uh, the V, high V, or heavy weapons uh, or heavy weapon system version of the V Gundam is badass. A, plus the cycle frame and everything else. I don't think one little Kshatriya can can uh, deal with that. And we talking about Armor Ray for the pilot. Now, see if it was Shard for the pilot. Yeah, yeah. Then you got some, you know, then you might have a little bit of comp. But no, nah, I don't think that. I, I'm, I'm going to give you Armor because he was seasoned at that time. It was in Young Boy Armor. Mm. And uh, Marita Cruz, she only fought like a young ass Bannister who was a punk anyway. So he, he wasn't even really that much of a challenge. Marita had bodies, though, dude. Yeah, I mean, she 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 killed cats. She did and not care. I didn't even she's, say about she's killed. She's killed yeah. like small cities. Isn't she like a clone of people who kill people. Yeah, <laughs> she got killing in her genes. Dude, she she kills shit. <laughs> Plus all that defensive power, she got the eye fields and the binders. You shoot at the binders, it's gonna get blown up, and she's still gonna be there. Yeah, you're right. Plus, since those binders each have two mega mega particle cannons, that's giving you 360 degrees of mega particle cannons. Facts. So I don't know. Y'all Thanks. decide. Hit it up in the comments. Yeah. See what you think. You guys got to decide with that one. But uh, we put it out there, and the next battle will probably be uh, even more intense. I'm not telling you who I'm going with because I got research to do. <laughs> he think he going to beat me on the next one. It's not going to happen. All right. So tips, man. We told you we'd have uh, Tim the Tool Man, Child of Mecca in. But unfortunately, we didn't get to test all of our equipment out. We didn't want to have a shabby... Uh, relay and recording so we're gonna hook up with them next week but we did want to start out with those basic tools that anybody wants to start out and do a real clean uh straight build what you need just the basic hardcore tools quality tools Mm -hmm. basically tools that are perfect for your just you know regular snap fit builder you know because let me tell you this it's a lot more regular snap fit builders than it is uh, builders that paint and build them that uh, and uh, builders that customize and scratch build and all of that. You know, the basic tools would be a pair of nippers. That's a right? fifteen dollar pair of nippers right there. All right. Those things have lasted me at least a year. Still cut sharp. Uh, never divot. Maybe a little bit of white, but I don't cut that close anyway because you and I both love the knife. Oh. This knife is, this is the Ulfa knife. You can find these knives at, uh, I don't know if your local hobby store would have them, but if they don't have them, Home Depot has them. And Lowe's, I think. Or is it Lowe's that has them? Uh, either Lowe's or yeah, Home Depot. Whatever it is, they're not expensive. They are like seven bucks, and they also come with uh, extra uh, yeah, blades, ton of blades. Uh, blades in them. Or you could buy another little pack of blades for $4. Another 10-pack of blades for $4. Now, what's nice about this knife is, first of all, this plastic handle, which you might think, oh, plastic is kind of cheap. Nah, this thing fits in your hand. It's really nice balance. And then this is the art knife. So the art knife has this maybe, what do you think, 45 degree? Not that sharp. What do you think of that? Uh, it's like a 35. I would say like a 35 degree. Maybe a 35 degree angle on this blade. Seems weird because we're used to those exacto knives and other hobby knives. But this thing is actually perfect. It works so well. Yeah, it does. Um, and the blades stay sharp. And interestingly enough, you might think this is all craziness that any hobby knife is a hobby knife. Uh, I've tried about four different kinds. Ulfa top, Exacto next. Anything else? You're kind of risking it. Yeah. I've had a little bite as I try because we slice. We don't right. hack at it. We slice. Right. And on those other knives, you're going to feel a little like bite on the edges of the knife because they're not, they're not smooth. Mm-hmm. So, get yourself an Ulfa. If you can't get that, get yourself an Exacto. So, like we said, we both use a knife, and that's pretty much all we have to use. We don't really have to do that much sanding, but, you know, to each their own. Some people like to sand. So, the main thing with sanding is having several different grits. You need something that's going to remove a lot, and then something that's going to get the nice, clean finish. So, one nice thing is metal files. Um, they come in all kinds of shapes, depending on what you need them for. Rounds, square, flat, so... You got the metal files, always get smooth. Again, buy hobby grade. You go to the hardware store, get some metal files. That's for doing wood. Gonna rip right to your Gundam. Yes, it will. Sand and sticks or sandpaper is your next step after you've, you know, taken down the big surface stuff. Go in there with the sand and stuff, just sand it smooth. Now, you guys using the God hands, this might be all you need. But if you're not, you need to play it safer, come up back on the uh, cut a little bit so you're not divoting because that's the worst thing you can do. 
unless you're gonna paint because then it doesn't matter because you can always patch it. But, right. Uh, you do not want to divot your stuff if you're not if you're just doing a straight build. Sidebar. Y'all people out there that's you know that's building and builders and stuff like that, please stick with the tools that are made specifically for small scale modeling. Don't try to use anything else that you would think would be compatible with it if it's really not being used by the people that really do it up the right way. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just like he said, you don't want to get the file from the hardware store that's going to be a rough thing, you know, because it's going to jack up your pieces and you're going to end up damaging uh, more of your model kit. Get the small kit that's available at hobby shops and or look online or something like that, you know. Uh, but get the stuff that's actually uh, made for what we're doing, you know. Don't try to shortcut it. Don't try to, you know, you know, don't try to... Uh, do anything around it because you're not going to get the same results. And at the end of the day, it's all about results. You know, that's rich. You really, really want you sit up and you drool over these pictures that you really, really want to do. And you want to know how to get that. Well, that's, be that comes from first off, just using the right tools to do it. And next is, uh, you know, applying those tools or whatever technique you use. And then the last main tool you're going to need is some tweezers. You know, you Probably this is probably one of the ones you're gonna first forget about. Like I don't need that. Yeah, you could put your decals on the edge of your blade and put them on like that, but these are a little more precise. And when it comes to water slides, you're gonna definitely need these. So if right. you're doing some vercas or some of the other master grades, you're mm -hmm. gonna definitely need yourself some tweezers. So you might as well get them now. Get used to using them. They work great for normal decals, and they work even better. Well, the only way to do water slides really. I usually push them around with a toothpick when I get them on there, but mm -hmm. pull them out of that water. You need some tweezers. That's right. You're going to be fishing them for them for about a month. <laughs> that's right. Yep. So that pretty much uh, rounds up like your basic snap fit tools that you would need. And if you want to go anything more than that, then you would get something like a little marker or something like that. But, we get, you know, we'll, you know we'll, we'll jump into all of that in another episode. And if you just look at the price here, I don't think we're over 30 bucks right here. Not even, no, 15, I don't think so. So 15 on the nippers, $7 maybe on the knife, Sand is six $2. File sets like 10 Tweezers are like 5 So you do the math. I don't know what that adds to. It was a lot of numbers. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, these in your kit will go, you know, those are, uh, those would definitely bulk up your toolbox, you know. What you want is different tools, you know. You don't just have to get one. You can get two or three. Two or three different kinds. I use three different kind of knives sometimes when I build. Yeah, sometimes those different angles help. That's right. Uh, like I personally, I like the big. You know, I like the big knives. But when I get the, you know, the real small pieces, then my big exacto is not going to work. So I pull out this one. You know, and this works. And the Ulfa knife works perfect every time too. You know. Now it's time for our sleeper picks of the week. And we do this because. Sometimes it gets a little dry to release it, so you need something else to switch it up with. And these might be some kits you guys might have forgot about. What you got over there? Well, my, for the first kit that I have, um, a lot of people sleep on this kit. This kit is a good one. This one right here. It's basically a starter kit. It's the RX-78 starter kit. And uh, the detail on this high-grade kit is... Uh, very, very good. You ain't gonna see a high grade more panel lines on it than this one. Right. Also, uh, it comes with a panel line marker, yep. which you can use and which is really, really good with it too, you know? Actually, open that up because that might be the new one and the extra little booklet that's in there might be in English now, which would be amazing because <laughs> it comes with a nice extra book in here, but being in Japanese, a little bit hard to get it. Let's see. Is it in English? No. no. <laughs> but there's still pictures, like always. All right, all right. Hey, I never, I never read one instruction. I only looked at the pictures for as long as I've been building. But it is a nice book to show you how to do some uh, panel lining. I think they usually had to do little blends and stuff like that. So nice little extra book in there. Yeah, definitely a good kit, and everybody sleeps on it, maybe because it's just like, you know, you may think it's just a regular high-grade kit, but it's actually one of the better high-grade kits, and uh, the articulation on it is good, the fits are well, and it actually comes with what you need to make it look good. Yep. So, there you go. Now, I'm picking the, the Grimoire, 
some of the names in this uh, G Rocco series. I'm not going to say the whole name of G Rocco because I can't even say it. <laughs> uh, G Rocco Gista? Uh, Ricon Guista? Whatever. They, they get real creative with these names after a while. But uh, this bad boy right here, look it up. I'm going to put some pictures up for you guys, but customs galore out of this thing. So if you're ready to start taking a simple kit and putting some work in on it, this is the one right here. Real interesting colors to start out with. Uh, I got this like weird tan. You got this strange uh, off tan color and a real muddy dark gray brown. Yes, like so, a, yes, like a, kind of like a Panzer gray. Right. So I mean, you don't got to keep these colors. You can do whatever you want with it. But the kit starts out real basic. But that head on that thing, man, that's something you just do not see in the Gunpla world. And Absolutely right. It's very unique, and it's a start of a lot of good customs. So that's my pick. Another sleeper kit uh, that I know a lot of people might know about because a lot of people like the new series and the Iron-Blooded Orphan series and stuff like that. But one of a really, really good kit that came from them is a very, very simple kit, which is the Grays. The simple Grays. This grays, these suits are very, very easy to customize, right? Okay, it is a 1-100. Uh, you know, it does have the inner frame. The inner frame has the detail. You don't even have to put the detail on the actual armor because, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, with these uh, IBO suits, a lot of people like to kind of funk out the inner frames and stuff like that. But everything on here, it's uh, I can actually count how many pieces of armor are on here that can be painted it's absolutely like there's kind of nothing to it you know you can do it with flat colors you can always freak them out i've very very rarely seen a graze that that didn't look good uh after somebody put a little bit of time into it and it doesn't take a lot of uh experience to make it look good and then that know? head opens up so that's a nice little option oh yeah it's really cool man so you you know if you if you like that closed look or that crazy eye in there Real nice look right there. And don't know, most of the IBO kits, you can switch up the armors and the legs and different parts from most of the 1-100. So it's a good base for a crazy custom. There you go. Uh, dude, I've made a couple customs already with it. Uh, yet to be released. Not yet. <laughs> you don't know about that yet. So, all right, people. That's it for this week's episode of uh, Real World Gunpla. Episode 2, you know. I'm the chef coming from the Gundam Kitchen. Find me on everything, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and the internet, thegundamkitchen.com. Simple, The Gundam Kitchen. And you can look me up on uh, Instagram as uh, Gundam Nerd, uh, where you see a bunch of cool pictures and postings uh, of what I do on a daily. Uh, different builds every week, different tips, different everything. Just look it up and you'll see for yourself. So, of course, y'all, like and subscribe. And you know what they're not ready for? I don't think they're ready for next week. I don't think they're ready either. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. They ain't ready. Hit.